Welcome back to the news today. This is one on one. One of the biggest criticisms towards Israeli politics is that most of the political uh, positions are not given to experienced and professional people, but are driven by political deals. One of the latest examples is the position of the chairman of the Defense and Foreign Affairs Committee. Our guest tonight, member of Israeli Parliament, Ophir Shelach, was for six months a candidate for this position. Shelach, who was uh, severely injured in the first Lebanese war, became a well known military commentator and also a basketball commentator. Around a year and a half ago, he joined the political party of his good friend, Finance Minister Yair Lapid, and today serves as the chairman of the Yesh Atid party. Mr. Ofer Shelach, thank you very much for coming to our studio. Thank you. Um, were you disappointed? I wanted the job. I, want, I wanted the position, not the job. Uh, I think I'm, uh, I have great plans for this committee because I, I think this committee, being an oversight committee, most of the committees of the Knesset, especially the Finance Committee, which I'm a member of, are uh, concerned with the, their executive role and especially their legislative role. The uh, uh, Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee has to do mostly with oversight, with, which is something which, in, you know, even in, in Israeli mentality is, is slightly overlooked. And I, I had great plans for it. Uh, I'm still doing, you know, I'm, I'm a member and not perhaps not the least of the members of this, of this committee, and I will work with the new chairman. But uh, uh, I wanted uh, this position, I, and I thought that Yeshatid deserved the position because we are um, underrepresented uh, uh, according to our uh, strength in the Knesset. And I, I said as much to Prime Minister Netanyahu, he chose otherwise, and uh, that's it. You know, we just spoke, and uh, I told you that uh, one of my uh, first big uh, reporters that I did, I did in your show when you were the host of the show, and um, you you were, you are still in my uh, in my eyes, a big journalist. And when you were a journalist, you were really hard. You were really hard on politicians. You were really hard on the government. You were really hard on, hard on the way that the decisions uh, were taken in Israel. When you are now inside, do you understand the criticism from journalists, from the people outside on the government? First of all, I do. And, you know, of, co of course, I think any criticism of me or my party is unfair and, <laughs> and uh, you know, has no basis. But, but I do. Uh, the, the thing is, and it's not that I learned on the inside things that I didn't know on the outside. I was pretty much on the inside uh, when I was, uh, I was a journalist. But uh, the thing is, you deal with the world of realities. And, and there's one thing that, that everybody needs to realize about Israeli politics right now. It's very fractured. The, the ruling party, the party that the, the, the prime minister's party, it has only 20 seats in the Knesset out of 120. That is the smallest ruling party Israel has ever had. That, that means that everything has to go through a coalition that is comprised of five parties, four of which are almost the same size. So a lot which of it I, has to do... Which I have to say that puts your, um, the head of your party in a very strong position. Strong, but responsible, because you know everything that Yeshati does, you, you cannot be, uh, um, you cannot topple the government on every, on every issue, and you're not going to do that. So, so it's it's uh, it means that you, you're also responsible for a lot that's going on, and you have to make compromises some of which I don't particularly like on a personal level, but I know why I'm doing that. And it's always the struggle to keep the balance between that and not losing the purpose, not losing sight of why you came into politics in the first place. And so far, I think we've been able to, to maintain that. You know, the last struggle that um, a military struggled for is the balance, the budget that they needed to, uh, to cut. Do you think that maybe the budget is a little bit too big for the idea for the Israeli army? I think, and I, I thought so, and I wrote about it extensively uh, and discussed it extensively in my former days as, as a journalist, that the problem is not really the size of the budget, but the way the budget is built. And we're not going to get into the details right now. But too little of the budget is really aimed and, and served to strengthen the IDF. And a lot of it has to do with, the other, with other things. Uh, to be fair, the the uh, the size of the budget relative to to the uh, the GNP has has diminished, 
and and it became something that that you know you can discuss almost in OECD terms but it's still it needs to be much more uh, um, uh, much better distributed much better uh, discussed and we've had extensive discussions on that in the committee the, the, the committee in the Knesset that deals with that and I'm going to be very active on that I think right now the size of the, the budget has become not the primary problem but its distribution and and how it's handled so you don't agree with the phrase of uh, former Israeli Prime Minister Ahud Barak saying that Israel needs a small but smart army a smart army co costs uh, a lot of money and Ehud Barak in fact was the defense minister for for from 07 to to 2013 and spent a lot of money so uh, uh, you got to be careful what you preach but yes Israel Israel needs to adjust its army to the changes both in the environment and in the nature of warfare and this is but but a lot of those changes do cost so money. let me take you to the changes in the environment and what yes. is happening right now in the Arab world and the Arab world is basically collapsing into yes. itself uh, and I want to tell take you about the new blame game from the United States towards Israel uh, for Israel the one to blame for the failure of the peace process to you from someone who watched it inside and outside do you think that this time Israel really is, is the one to blame well I'm not playing the blame game. I don't like the blame game. I'll tell you this: being the strong, the the, the stronger party by by far, and I, I'm very glad that we're the stronger party by far. We will take naturally take more more of the blame, and we have to deal with it as Israelis. You know, not fight it, not saying it's too not fair. Uh, Mr. Abbas said this. Mr. Netanyahu said that. Th th this serves no purpose. We have to realize that it's in our utmost interest to reach an agreement with the Palestinians, to separate ourselves from the Palestinians. And if you realize that this is our primary interest, then the question, you know, what did Abbas do or say, or, or who's to blame at a certain point, becomes a moot point. I'm not playing this. Uh, and, and, and the other thing is this. It's also a fact of life that, you know, justifiably or not, the Americans, the Europeans, most of the world will blame us for what's going on. And this has become a danger for Israel's economy. This is, is, has become a danger for, for Israel's place in the world in, in science and culture and everything else. And we have to take that into account. That becomes a problem, not, you know, not, not a much smaller problem than the, the security problem that, that uh, we deal with. So uh, I, I don't, uh, um, you know, I don't blame the blame game. I try to understand what's what's right for Israel. It's but we are seeing a blame game inside the coalition. We're seeing the blame blame game from Naftali Bennett, the head of the Bayit UD party, who is not seeing the things the way that you are seeing them. Yes, Naftali Bennett does not believe. In agreement with in an agreement with the Palestinians, and and you know to be fair to him, he never did, and he never said he did, and uh, so he will attack at any point any process because he thinks the process will lead to nothing or to bad things according to his worldview. I think that once again separation from the Palestinians, the the end of our occupation of another people. And of uh, the, our definition, the definition of our borders, and therefore and of who we are. will you take into consideration a separation from Naftali Bennett? It, it, and first of all, sitting it's a, together with the uh, Avoda party. The, the, this is not this is not a, a viable option right now. And and actually, we discussed the RLP discussed this option with Shelly Chemovic right the night after the elections, and I can mm -hmm. tell you it happened because I was there. And she didn't want it because she promised her a voter would be voted that she w would not go into a Netanyahu-led government, and that's fine. So it was never a viable option. And we don't know what's going to happen. It's primarily in Israel. It's primarily up to the prime minister. And what we are saying constantly is if the prime minister chooses to go this way, we will push him that way. We will judge our participation in the government. According have, to this... You have, you have 15 seconds, yes. and you know what 15 seconds on TV means. Are you, do you have any regrets for getting into politics? None, none at all. Not at all? I left you 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Ophel Thank, thank you, you very much Pleasure for coming here. to our studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we will be here at the same time, same place from the Jaffa Port, Israel. Have a great night.